Hi guys, welcome back to the Legal Gentleman YouTube channel, The Hunter Collective. Um, today I've got a woman in the chair today and we had a little chat on the couch and his last haircut, or the last style that he went for, was that kind of like one back and sides, high and tight, and then kind of a shorter, kind of more, not blunt, not too blunt, but a bit like kind of not too feathered, not too blunt, so that kind of in-between look like, which I totally understand what he means. Um, but we were just looking through the hair, so just having a look through it, and he got a haircut last that was it not really what, was it what you wanted, but it was a little bit? It's a bit rough. Okay. So what, what I've noticed is that when he wants the one high, it looks like it's going really high, but kind of not taking the corners in too much. So as you can see, it's quite long through the corner here and then quite short sort of through the crown. So it's going to really change his look up today because I'm going to try and take the one as high as I can, but still working with that square. So trying to utilize the, the shape of um woman's head basically just to kind of create that squareness so up and off with the one so again that kind of high and tight look um i've done it similarly in one of the, the previous videos david beckham video where we're kind of using the head shape to, to, to kind of create the blend um so that's what i want to try and do today but we think i've done like basically like a, a classic short back and sides with a tiny bit of a shorter fringe now you said you go diving is that right Surfing. So oh, surfing, right? Okay, so he's just he goes surfing, right? So I don't think he wants a high maintenance haircut. So I don't think we're gonna give you a high maintenance haircut. I think what he's kind of asked for is kind of bang on. Just a it is kind of high and tight, short back and sides, bit of a shorter fringe, a little bit of choppy through the top. Super easy, super effective. It works well, it dries quickly as well, which I'm you know I'm sure that helps. Um so yeah, I think we'll give it a shampoo and conditioner and then we'll um we'll crack on. All right, cool. So we've um we've just shampooed and conditioner, a little bit of a blank canvas for me. So what I thought we'd do today in terms of starting off is that I know I, I always do a horseshoe. Well, nine times out of 10, I do a horseshoe section. But I think today I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna start at the top this time around and work down. The reason being is that I'm gonna set the shape through the top, pick the length and everything that we like, and then set myself a guideline on the corners here, so the round of the head, so I know where to come up and off when I'm using my clippers. So, I think this will benefit, this look will benefit from this because I'm trying to use this head shape for the high and tight kind of blend um, that Umin's after. So I don't want to start doing quite a low, a low number one or something like that. Like he really wants a high and tight show back inside. So I want to try and do that to the best I can. So I think by working away and taking all this corner off here and working through and setting myself a guideline then I know exactly where to come up and off. It should also help me blend as well. So if all these things come true, then We'll have a great video. If they don't, then I'm a liar, but I reckon they will. But what we're looking for is that working through this corner here, so we can get rid of this longer corner. As you can see, when I pick this up, you see there's a little point in it, here and there. When we get rid of that, and it's finger length, we can work up and off with our clipper work then. So it should hopefully help to graduate a little bit easier, especially given that more high and tight look. So I'm going to start by sectioning just before the crown. So that's what's, that's what's good about when you... Um, what I found by doing these videos and, and obviously doing tutorials is that you realise you have to have an end goal in sight and it, it would be easy just to kind of cut and kind of do the same things all the time. But I thought... When you start to talk about what the end result's going to be like and you actually get that end result, it's, it's very satisfying knowing that all the knowledge that I've taken over the years working with some incredible barbers and hairdressers is that... And also, when I've done trade tests in the past on people, you ask someone, why are you doing it? And half the time, it's just because you've been taught it. So I always find that by doing this, I sometimes amaze myself because my end goal and what I want to do comes to life and I watch it on the videos coming to life. So it's quite amazing that when you have that end goal and you know where to work through, this is why I try and break it down for everybody is that the end goal is the main thing. You need to vision that end goal and then also know how to get there. So by doing this and working on the top, this is why I think by working through the blend, it'll be much easier to get to the end goal that I want more than doing the horseshoe. So I'll explain it as we go along. So work on my first section from the back. I'm working forward, taking it right on the center. And I'm going to take about that much off because it is still a bit short for the crown, right? I'm going to cut it pretty straight. Now, I'm going to that fine texture, so I don't want to try and overly texturize this look. I want the sectioning and a little bit of the razor to do that for me as well. So I'm taking nice small sections. 
and I'm picking it from the back forward. I'm using the guide from behind there. For the section. And with, don't forget as well, I'm using the, the, uh, the finer teeth to take these sections. With finer hair, I always tend to use the, uh, the finer teeth as well. It just seems to pick the hair up a little bit easier than using the wider uh, side of the comb. As you see, we're starting to get a lot more length now. So that initial guide that I took wasn't too short at the back, but as we're getting longer towards the front, we will be taking a bit more off, but I want all the top to basically be quite uniform. I'm not looking to try and um, leave any length towards the fringe like that. I'm gonna literally work through like a, short, a traditional short back and sides, just with a slight little twist on it, just to match into Ullman's hairline and, and also just, just a little bit more texture to it as well. I hope that's what you're Cheers. I'm going to do that straight up. Still leaving a little bit of length through the fringe. Again, like we've spoken about on all the other videos, when you're working through the fringe and you pull it straight up, because the head will curve forward, it will still naturally over direct the fringe. So if you pull that back, that's where my section was. But if I pull it forward to cut the actual fringe, you'll see as I bring it forward, I have my guide. So as you see, by doing that, by bringing it back, it's an over direction. If you went forward, you cut the fringe off. That's why the fringe will always look a lot longer as you're working through. But don't forget, as you get to the fringe, you've got the guide line before it. The same as before. I'm just working through this corner now. So you'll see quite a lot more hair come off now. Only because the corner is a, it's a lot longer. And again, keeping it as we get to the fringe, keeping it up, going straight up and off the head. Still leave that little bit of length in the fringe again. It's a bit like when I leave the crown a bit longer. It's nice to finish off at the end, or once we've finished doing the top. I'm going to pull this section out and I'll set my guide when I come off with the clippers. So, bringing this in. And what I'll have is the guide from the top, put through my fingers. There's my guide from that corner there. So I'm bringing the section from the round of the head here, I'm pulling it completely horizontal out towards me. Cut that in. Same thing here, working across. There's my guide. And just not working into that fringe, so moving that fringe out the way. And use that as my guide. Take one section just back to the side of the head. When you get to the back, what that's doing is leave me a nice little guideline just there, knowing where I need to work up and off. As you bring that over, it all blends in. And here we go. So there's my guideline. So I'll pick this up. There we go. 
is my guide. So that's what I'm looking to wear too when I come to my clipper wear. But I've pulled it out horizontally right at the rounded head or just kind of take it below the rounded head so I know where to come up and off. That's why we're putting the guide in. So I'm going to do the same thing from just across from the center of the top and then work it through and then basically copy that side as well. This is really good um, for anybody who's after just something very low maintenance. It's just such an easy hair. But I think it fits so well into a woman's lifestyle as well, just, of just surfing, you know. It, it's something that's gonna grow out nicely. It's gonna take a little bit longer to grow out too. I just think it's, um, it, it is the classic and it's a classic for a reason, you know. I'm doing it slightly differently than I would do if I was doing it completely traditional. I'd probably wear scissor over comb through the top and whatnot, but um, it's just, I, th I think this haircut has never gone out of fashion for a reason. I believe, I think it was kind of mainstream, wasn't it, from George Clooney, wasn't it, we said, wasn't it? He was the kind of person who kind of brought this kind of short back and sidey, um, kind of, what was it, like, what we said, it was a Caesar cut of me or something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, if, I think that's what it was called at the time. But he was the one who really took off that kind of, you know, went from the curtains down to that kind of short back and side, so. Homage to George, shall we say. That fringe now because this hairline curves around. I'm going to get around this way, I'm completely parallel with my section. Okay, so the fringe is that just that one section longer? So basically, it's the same length as when he sat down the chair. Come around this side now. And again, I'm following the round of the head, so I'm picking it up at the corner, pulling it up from the fringe, put it straight across. Again, nice small sections. I'm using the guide from the left hand side. Is that? She's an amazing actress, isn't she? Now, same thing again, section that off from that set from where we just cut the last section. So we've got our guide. And just pick a section underneath and then pull that guide down. There we go. There we go. There we go. So I've got my guide. Just there like before. So just do always just do that cross check. Very end, just pick it up. Yeah, there's my guide there. So I know as soon as we dry this off and we start working with the clippers, as we start getting up and to the round of the head, we'll see that guide. So that's why we do it. Now I'm gonna put the fringe in now. So again, we're not looking for something too feathered is what we said, and nothing too overly blunt. So I'll use the raise for that. So what I'll do is I'll bring it down, all the way down. I'll section off and off like that. I'm making sure the hair is, is very wet, otherwise the razor will pull. I'll bring it down my finger. Looking for a nice solid length to keep that fringe nice and solid, and nice and full. So use the razor to work through. What we're going to get is a very nice serrated finish. So nothing too blunt, but nothing too feathered. And now just freehand that through. I'll follow the, and literally create, like, create the shape that I want to create. So that nice, more straighter fringe than following the hairline round. So get, this will give the most natural effect to the fringe. So again, like we always say, using a scissor is always, gonna, is always basically two pieces of metal coming together. So there's going to be a blunt element to it somewhere. Using the razor, 
If you overly use it, it'll make it really feathered. If you use it kind of slightly flat, it'll be a blunter. But if you use it and then break through like this, that'll create that more natural finish to it as well. So we're going to slide into the fringe now and just help break that up a little bit. Again, we're not looking for something too feathered, so as I'm working down, as I'm getting to the fringe, I'm coming straight off the head. I'm not actually going into the fringe, I'm going to the sections behind the fringe. This will help break up this bit here. So if you want it blocky, you can keep it nice and forward. If you want it broken up, you can work it behind the fringe. It just gives them a few options. And then what I'll do is I'll do a tiny bit of slide cutting through the top. This hair has got that finer texture, so it will move about with very minimal effort. And also, one of the things that I should point out is that Omen doesn't like to wear product. So again, this haircut needs to be done as, as perfect as I can make it so that it looks great without anything in it. There's no good of me putting loads of product and then he, he wakes up tomorrow and goes, I don't even wear it like that. So I need to make sure this sits great without anything in it. So I'm going to dry this off. Just using the fingers and drying it from the crown. So again, working that circle around the crown to get to dry its, its natural uh, growth pattern. Yeah. As you see, that friend isn't too blunt. It's got that little bit of shatteredness to it. So not blunt, not too feathered. So I think we've got a bang on. Does that look all right for you like that, yeah? Cool. Is that what you had in mind when you said about that? Brilliant. Nice. So again, as you can see, by working that razor behind the fringe, what's done is allowed the fringe just to move about a little bit without actually affecting the finish of the fringe from the razor. So you've got that very serrated ends to the, to the actual fringe itself, but it's not like kind of strandy, you know, like that kind of real feathered look. But by working behind the fringe and just creating that little bit of movement, it allows them to break it up as much as you want or have it as blunt as you'd like as well. There we go. Right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna finish off my guideline at the crown. As you know, I always like to cut the crown as, as sort of, as, as close to its natural growth pattern as possible. And obviously when we're working through the top, we have to kind of come across it and whatnot. But that's why when I worked to here before with my guideline, now I know the lighting isn't too good to see this guy, but if you look here, if, you, if I can try and get an idea for you, that length there compared to that length there, there's my guide that I'm looking for when I work with the clipper wheel. So what I'm gonna do, is bring it down from the crown. So scooping it under to my finger. So scooping it to meet my finger, going above my finger, and then bring it down as it's dry. Again, the crown is the most important thing. I'm gonna follow this guide and cut across. So there's my guide. I'm wanting to cut right across. Because again, we need the guide for the crown as well, because we're working high and tight through the back as well. There's my guide. Now what we'll do, we'll get on this side, we'll keep going, and we should meet on the other side. There we go. So this is our guide. All the way through, so we've got longer hair under here. Right, so onto the clippers. I'm going to start with my one and a half guard. So we're open. 
and then we'll start at the side and sort of brush the fringe out the way and start here and just work up and off into that guide. Now what you should see is a really nice natural blend coming through now. So I'm working into finger length here. So I'm basically working into a number two. You could get away with that by him walking out of that. I personally think you'd get away with that. If, if you were being lazy, which we're not, obviously. Just work up and off. So what I'm doing, slow motion, is I've got one, like a 175, should we say, 1.75, and I'm working up and off into that guide. So I'm trying to effectively blend in that length to there by just using the shape of the clipper head and also the shape of his head as well. So again, as we work around, you'll see, up into my guide, I'm working up and off. So again, we're trying to keep that crown there. I'm just trying to utilize that high and tight effect with the shape of a woman's head and also the angle of where you pull off with the clipper and also the clipper head. I'm working up again into that blend. So you can use your comb as a guide if you want to push into the kit, into the actual guard itself. What I'm doing is just putting it on before where the guide is, just bringing the guide into the clipper head. So meeting there like that. Speed this up a little bit. We'll work it up and off. So what's this? Work up and off. Now, honestly, you could get away with that as a blend. I know we'll perfect it, but I honestly think that you get away with that. That's how easy it is to blend when you're following the same kind of guide. When you put your guideline in, you know where you're working to. It's very easy to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of effort. But also, again, we're looking for that real high and tight look, aren't we, as well? So, so I'm working now the one, the one and a half close guard into that 175. What I'm doing is I'm getting there and I'm pulling out like that. That's the angle that I'm doing it at. So it's blending nice and effortlessly into that one, that open guard on the one point on the uh, one and a half guard. There we go. I'm going to work down to my one guard, open, do the same thing, work a bit lower down, I'm coming off into where my closed one and a half guard started. Again, slow motion is, I'm just working up and coming up now. So essentially you're coming up right up like that. So we're just stopping here. So we're not going around, which would take that corner off. We're going flat on the head. As we get to there, we're placing it flat again. So the whole point of that shape of the clipper head, we're going in, flat, and then coming up and off. As you see, if I just kept working that up, I wouldn't take anything off anyway. That's essentially what we're doing all the way through. By doing that, it helps to graduate as well. So this will help to blend it too. Another close guard into the one. Start it just where the side bend starts. And do the same thing. Up and off. Same idea. Don't worry about the 
Take all this off. So I'm coming up and off again, so slow motion. Coming up and off. But we're still keeping that nice square finish to this haircut. We're not doing it too round. And as you can see, by working it like that, very minimal effort to connect into that top as well. Very minimal. What we're still not being allowed to do is maintain some length over that crown as well. I think this would be really ruined if we went too high at the crown. I think still keeping it a nice bit of shape to the back here works really, really well. I think if we went up and over, I think the whole shape and look will change of this. So I still think by working and keeping that crown and putting that guideline in as the crown was dry and following it through, I think it would really help this shape. I think it worked well for everybody. Is I'll just work a nice sort of natural taper into the neck, nothing too high, not trying to take any effect of like a fade on the neck or anything, just a very nice natural low blend out into nothing. So leave it back on the open blade and just flicking off like that. Just coming up and off as we get to just the bottom of the ears. Just remember to stand behind the clipper, don't be kind of doing this because it won't be even. If you work around with the clipper like that, it'll stay much even, much more consistent as well. You've got full control over it as well. And then go into the middle, so working in between the clone guard and the guard fully open. And just work a little bit lower down. Just by your own judgment. And then completely closed on the very bottom of the neckline. This just gives a very nice natural taper. Now, a taper to me is un getting rid of unnecessary unwanted hair. That's what I always thought a taper was. So I think doing something like this is kind of perfect because that's all you're doing. You're just getting rid of all that like, kind of unnecessary hair on the neck and you just blend it out into nothing. No harsh line down the bottom. It's going to go out very quickly. It just gives it a bit of a nice softer finish. So now what we'll do, using my Matador, my um, Soka 45, is I'm just going to work up from the one, clip us up, and work up and off. The fringe out the way. I'm working into that guide. And now lifting it up and coming across. I'm just basically capping off where I put my guideline in before. So you see, I'll pull it out. You see my guideline through there. What I created with my fingers earlier on. On the horizontal section.
Move it all the way around. Lifting that up, putting the crown in accordingly. So here, back to that. Looking up and off the cone. Play that nice square graduation. And then just finish off my guide. Now what I'll do is using my size one comb. The reason why I like this one is it's really flexible. So you can get into tighter corners down the neck without having to kind of get a bit awkward with the comb that won't bend through. As you're working like this, it just helps you to put a little bit of pressure on and keep your fingers out of the way as well so you can get in then tighter spaces. And just use that just to make sure you blend it in the one to everywhere else. A nice bit of fine tuning. I'm going to switch to a thinner scissor. So the scissor that I use to point cut is a touch thinner. So it'll just help me retouch any of the hairs that I can't get to with a, a bit of a thicker scissor. So what you want to do with this, when you're working on such shorter hair, the shorter comb as well, a smaller comb, is make sure your scissors are working over time basically. A bit like trying to mimic a clipper as much as you can. So if you do it too slow and you move the comb at relatively the same speed, you'll leave steps. Now what you want to do is about three times the speed of the comb moving. So try and do three cuts for every time you move that comb up. And that'll keep it more seamless. You won't see any lines or any step bl uh, blends in the, um, sorry, steps. Or basically what we create where you see lines when you're blending through. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And that will do. Is we'll edge out the hairline now. Just going over the temple area just in case I've missed it with the clippers. And it's quite, quite blonde through here, a lot of lighter hairs through here, so I'm just going to strengthen this up a little bit. But as you can see, it's beard's quite natural, so I don't want to make it too shaped. Just trying to add a little bit of strength to the hairline. But I'm not going to work up into the hair or nothing like that. That again, we're looking for that low maintenance element here. So if I start shaping and cutting into hairlines, it's going to go out very quickly. So which that low maintenance element is gone because essentially he's going to have to get a haircut again because it's stubble. So I'm trying to keep it as close to the ear as I can, just to make it nice and clean. I'm not looping it too high. As you can see, his hair goes so close to his ear. If it went too high, there'd be so much stubble there within probably a few days. Again, just keeping it as wide as possible. As you can see, just gonna try and keep it Literally as wide as I possibly can so that it still looks neat. And things like this, good to take into account because again, there's no point in having a low maintenance hairstyle when you've cut right into the hairline because it'll grow out too quickly. And just using the minis, flick up into the hairline. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and just trying to find the sharpest points. Still quite low. using the smaller side, so the finer teeth, just to make sure that I've got any hair that the one, the one guard missed. Because the guard teeth can be quite wide, so it's quite hard sometimes, especially when someone's ear, uh, hair grows so close to their ears. It's very hard to get that one in there, so just using the smaller teeth, and just pushing down on the hairline, and just exposing them longer hairs. Nice and wide. And what I'll do now is I'll just blend the beard in. Of course, I think there's going to be a lot of people watching this with real beard envy, you know, mate. I tell you. I, I am one of them. I'm just working a one and a half down. And then we'll do a little bit of freehand, a little bit of clipper over comb too. Going straight out, I'm going to flat to the head as you can. working down. There we go. Same again the other side. So now, I'm just going to finish off by just cutting through the crown a little bit, picking that up. As you can see, this is where we left it. And that is going to sit nice and flat. As you can see, that is not going to stick up too much. So I reckon we bring this back and over and over direct that front bit back into our guide from the right hand side, the left hand side, and underneath. What this will do is it'll still blend it into the here, but it'll just stop it from sticking up. So it's to be a slightly a tiny bit longer than everywhere else, but it'd be so unnoticeable. And that's it. I don't think you can notice that a little bit longer anywhere else. And just take that fringe out. Here we go. Here go, mate. How's that look for you? Is that right? Awesome, mate. So, as you can see, you've kept that fringe, so it's not 
mega blunt, but there's a, a kind of a little bit, um, you can still see it can be blunt if you want to, you can also make it as messy as you want. And then just when it's high and tight on the side, you've still got that nice squareness here, but you can still see all that, that length in the corner has been taken off now as well. All right, man? Cool, brilliant. Right, so to recap, what we did was, um, we worked from the top to the bottom this time around. So more than doing the horseshoe and working through the sides and the back, what I did was I worked through the top and picked the length that was gonna work, that I thought would work for him. So again, we were looking for the short back and size element, low maintenance to match him with his lifestyle and his no job now, which I'm very jealous about. Um, and kind of just worked straight through, um, just cutting it uniform, cutting it blunt. He's got that finer texture in his hair. So I think if I was to overly texturize his haircut, it would probably make it even thinner and too wispy. Now the thing in mind as well was that he didn't want that kind of wispy kind of feathered fringe. We want something in between that, so nothing too mega blunt, nothing too feathered. So by working through and cutting it kind of blunt, it, it kind of creates a little bit more fullness to the hair as well. And then we use the razor to, to texturize, but I also use the razor to finish the fringe off. And I've just done it all forward and just kind of picked little bits out so it was kind of a, a little bit more messy. So I didn't kind of section it all off, I just done it completely forward, just as he would wear it. So I cut it as he would wear it. Um, there's nothing kind of left any longer or anything like that. It's just sitting kind of all uniform forward. And then through the side, I wear the horizontal section. So from this guide here, what I've just cut, I use the horizontal section and pulled it out to just at the point of the round of his head. So where you feel the bone, just at that point there. And just cut it to my finger length. Now that is usually, I don't know, say, what would you say, about a three or something length, right? So what that helps me do is pick a guide. So when I come to working the one and a half, up and off, I'll see the guide as it gets to that point. So I know that's the point I need to come up and off. That's why I did that. That's why I just kind of giving myself that room for no error. That's what I was doing. And then again, same the other side. And then I work down from the one and a half guard on an open. So like a 1.75, you want to say. So uh, one and a half guard on, pull the lever down. And I work just up and off the head. Literally just trying to, just following the guide all the way around and then just wait the one into that as well just to make it very seamless but it's so effortless to blend like it, you'll see yourself it didn't take long to blend that in, like to even just connect the top because we'd use this head shape the, the angle of the clipper head and also the the, the motion of where, where to come up and off at your guide to blend so if you've got something like this in your chair it can be done so quickly and effortlessly but still look very good as well um and that's pretty much it I'm, Obviously kept the, the lines nice and wide at the back so it didn't show too much stubble and just a low taper, but that's all we need to do. He doesn't like to wear product. I think it's got enough shape anyway for it to look the way he wants it to. And uh, yeah, nice and low maintenance, nice and simple. I'm still really jazzed what you do for a living, mate. <laughs> I'll just show you the back and sides. So that's what you get. Nice your back and sides, basically. Great. All right, yeah, awesome. Thank you very much, man. For anyone looking to get it done? Anyone looking to get this? What you're looking for is basically, again, short back and sides. One, number one back and sides, shorter on top, and a slightly shorter fringe, but nothing too blunt, nothing too overly thinned out. Um, again, just using, just ask them if you're gonna get that one quite high and tight, just ask them not to go up and off, um, not to go up and over the round the head, or not to go up and over the crown, for example, because I think it would be really ruined if I had took that off there. Uh, I think if we'd have took that right off, it would have changed the whole look. It would have been very front heavy. Um, it would have looked a little bit too thick at the front, I'd imagine. So I think just keeping that shape and working around, still keeping that squareness in there. So it's almost like that kind of jar heady kind of look, I suppose. It's kind of really square. Um, so ask for that. Number one back in size and just trying to keep it high and tight, but not too round, if you can help it. Uh, and then, yeah, just, just, short back, just basically trim the top as, as short as you want to go. And then just cut the fringe in. Again, this is a good haircut for anyone who, for, for Umin's hairline, for my hairline, it, w it wouldn't really change because you're combing it all the way down, you're cutting it to a, a straight line basically. So it doesn't really matter on the hairline. Obviously if it's a bit, if it's thinning a lot, it can be hard to do because you have to take the section behind it shorter. Again, because we're not looking for any like kind of over diet, we're not looking for any sort of um, disconnection in the fringe or nothing like that. So just ask them, just to, again, just a good trim on the top and just try and keep that hairline full, but not too blunt, I would say. Yeah, brilliant, thank you very much.